we're going to move on to a movie before we wrap up today with uh, a very famous musical artist playing a pretty big role. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a second. But The Burnt Orange Heresy from mm-hmm. Giuseppe Capotondo, Capotondi. 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 He's an Italian. Um, yeah, interesting movie. It was The Closer at the uh, Venice International Film Festival last mm-hmm. year, 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, dropped in the states back in March, and then I think when COVID hit, it really uh, it was, it was just starting like out. limited, limited release, and then COVID happened. So for a movie like this that is appealing to a very specific demo and needs to have a very strategic release, COVID just completely cut it cut its legs off, you know. And I think it got it got released slowly again in August as theaters opened up, but just hit VOD past uh, this past week, so. And that was probably for the best because this is a movie that uh, in today's climate has no really no way to find an audience. Yeah. And I was left very mixed on this film. I think there's some really wonderful parts and then some parts that just fell totally, totally flat for me. Um, the the lead, Clace Bang, he's a Danish mm-hmm. actor and, and musician. Yeah. From um, Square, the international film. That's where he got really big recently. Uh, not play- big to Americans. And he plays alongside Elizabeth Debicki. They're the, I guess, the, the two leads in this. And then mm-hmm. you have Mick Jagger and Donald Sutherland with, with some, some side roles. Um, let, let's start with The Good Dave. What were the parts about this movie that you liked? Mm. I think it looks pretty nice. You know, yeah. it, This is based off a Charles Wilford novel. Apparently in the novel, it takes place in Florida. Well, for this movie, they said, F that, we're going to Lake Como, brother. Uh, and just being at a random villa on the lake in northern Italy, yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, You get to but, see some art on the wall. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, you know? I'm down yeah. with that. I think that about nice, uh, nice settings. You know, it's funny, it's funny. For a movie that only takes place in a few places, there's only, like, there's what, like, maybe 10 people that even speak in the movie? Like, it's like, Low, it's like secretly modest, yet mm-hmm. it also takes place on Lake Cuomo. So, I, I, I like the setting. I like the, uh, the 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 way they made the visuals kind of pop with that. Um, I think Dubicki is just someone who has continued to give interesting performances, even if the movies don't live up to her performances. And and you know, I think think of Widows. You know, uh, she mm-hmm. she's a very in demand actress at this point, but just a really. Uh, tantalizing person whenever she's on screen i think she's really talented and i liked her a lot in this um i also like donald sutherland because he seemed to be having a lot of fun as debney mm-hmm. um now the dialogue he is he is uh espousing is, was hard to follow at times but it seemed like sutherland was was having a good time yeah and even mick you know mick jagger's in two scenes but i don't know he was kind of fun yeah i mean uh, he hasn't acted in like damn near 20 years i think yeah but so it's been a long time i I think sutherland was by far the highlight for me because he especially the scene where um well the the walk between uh his character jerome debney and uh berenice uh, you know Mm -hmm. after um james is like no no no, i can't i can't go i need to stay back and he tries to break into his house and find the paintings um you know, I thought that scene was really good, and he he kind of portrayed this like sweet, very like nuanced character. Who and then they go to dinner, and I think that's probably the the scene I liked him the most in when he you know finally brings him into his workshop and is like, yeah, there's no paintings, man. And you just kind of see the guy like his wheels turning. Like I I don't have the stomach for this. I was like, all right, this is like really top notch, not Sutherland in my book, especially for like late period Sutherland. So he's he's that, he's, he's he's sneaky like old as hell now. By the way. He's yeah. 85. He was old when the Hunger Game movies were being made. Yeah. Like, uh, he's he's up there, man. But Mick Jagger, I just could not could not get out of the mindset. It's like, oh, this is Mick Jagger talking. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> it was tough. Um, I wish they had almost just been like, you're just going to be Mick Jagger. Like, I, I, it could have been interesting. Well, and that's kind of the thing, though. It, he almost, <laughs> like, we, we associate with Mick Jagger, right, as someone who's lived a very hard life at this point, right? Mm-hmm. You know, this this kind of sleazy, perhaps criminal art dealer, you mm-hmm. know, kind of fits. 
yeah. kind of fits. I, I didn't find it that big of a walk. You know, this guy <laughs> living in this incredibly lavish home, more or less by himself, mm-hmm. and just kind of being a shady character. Yeah, kind of, kind of feels like Mick could get there to me. Yeah, you know, but like I, I think this, this is the script's kind of weird with this movie. You know, it's like you have a hard time. I, I had a hard time following what we were supposed to like think about some of the characters and like where we were going with the plot and i think once you get like i guess the twist about debney it's like huh and then next thing you know like the plot kicks in the high gear and you kind of see what's going to happen is james Mm -hmm. is going to like lose his mind basically like kind of at the beginning it's like to have these conversations and it's like the movie has this really like top level conversation in common about the value of art right and it's very obvious because the first scene is james literally duping Taurus in Milan about how I can convince you that art is completely incredibly beautiful just by spinning a yarn even Mm -hmm. if I'm completely bullshitting you right and then that that very conversation ends up being what like Debney's career is and then in turn what James decides to take advantage of like I had had a hard time in grasping like what was like the main theme we were supposed to take away because Again, it's like presented kind of obviously in the beginning and then kind of lost sight of it. But I still kind of like watching it. I think it was a pretty easy movie to watch. So I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I found it pretty um, engaging at parts. You know, like I, I think especially like the third act as James is really like losing his mind and, you know, he like drowns uh, Ber- Berenice and yeah. then she somehow comes back to life and then he kills her again. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. And, and, and that, that whole part, I it was hard to figure out if that was actually happening or if this was kind of in his head. And I, I think I think where the movie becomes really tough is it is very meta in a lot of ways where like, you know, when James is first driving Berenice to the compound out and uh, out on the lake there, he says something like art is about the, the lies that people tell and like the, the, mm-hmm. the lies that people want to tell. Or so he has like some line, I can't remember what it was, but then like the more and more it goes then it becomes like, all right, James is actually like playing out this whole like theory and this mindset. And what does it mean for something to have value? What does it mean for art to be, to have value? It's all yeah. this uh, very meta thing. And, um, you know, like the whole thing with the fly too, right? How there's like oh, a right. yeah. fly in there. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just very, uh, it's almost like too heady, I think in some ways. So, and that's the thing too. It's like seeing James succeed by presenting right. this Debney that he actually painted. And it's like, huh, James, you were right. Even if you're probably fucked up and don't feel satisfied about this now, but you were right. But it's like the audience thinks you're a fucking scumbag now because you just murdered Bernice, mm-hmm. let alone lied to everyone else on top of that. So I don't feel satisfaction seeing that you technically are right. You know? Yeah. So yeah, the, the, it's like the meta convo maybe needed to be focused a little bit or changed. I'm not sure. But I think it's just a script that ultimately kind of fails to come together despite some interesting parts and ideas. Yeah, for sure. And. I mean, it's worth. I think it's worth checking out. It's only like an hour and forty minutes, so it's not mm-hmm. a super long watch. And like you said, I think Debicki is really good when she's on screen. Um, I kind of wish we had gotten a little bit of more time with with Berenice. I feel like yeah. I feel like she brought probably the most like sweetness to the movie, which I think it needed a tinge more of. It was a bit serious throughout, but mm-hmm. overall, um, you know, it, for a, a COVID movie, I, I'll call it a movie I've probably only watched at home because of covid not bad 